Hello everyone, welcome to Skyrise Academy. Today we are going to discuss one of the very important schemes which uh, can be asked in prelims and mains in your UPSC exams. So the scheme is PM Potion Shakti Nirmal. So let's see why it is in use recently. So as you all know, we study through mind maps because they are the best ways to, you know, remember things for a longer time because our brain works that way. If you want to know more, you can write me in the comment section on why to use mind map and how to use mind map. So let's see the context. So why the scheme is in news recently. State of Karnataka has decided to serve eggs in the midday meal scheme. So this scheme is popularly known as midday meal scheme. Its aim is to serve food to the school children. We will come to the features later. So why Karnataka is uh, going to serve eggs? So there is high prevalence of uh, malnutrition, anemia and low immunity among the students in the state. And there are some supporting reports also. So National Family Health Survey 5 has found that 35% of children under 5 are stunted and around 20% are wasted. So let's understand what this stunted means. It means low height for the age group. This definition is given by WHO and wasted is low weight for the certain height. Uh, the, you can be confused between these two terms. So the easiest way is wasted is related to weight. So once you are very sure of one topic, you can then make out what is the other topic about. So wasted equals to weight. Wasted weight. Do remember it like this. So there has been opposition. The caste dominations and religious interests, they are opposing this move by the state government. So let's look at the history of the scheme now. So it was launched centrally in 1955, 1995. It is centrally sponsored scheme. Centrally sponsored scheme means the expense of the scheme is divided between the center and state. We will come to the ratio soon. So it is up to the class five years in the history. Now it has been extended to class eight in 2007. So before the center launched the scheme in 1995, the for in earlier initiatives taken in this regard were by the Madras Municipal Corporation in 1920. These are not very important, but it's good to know so that you can connect the dots. Then Tamil Nadu again after independence in 1956, then Kerala in 1961. It was run by humanitarian agency and officially it became the second state in 1984. And it was then after nine years later, that center, 11 years later, the center launched it in 1995 world, uh, all over India. So in the scheme in its current form, what are its features? This is important from prelims point of view. So note down if you want, you can even download this mind map. So feel free what you would like to do. See, note, when you note down certain things now, it stays in your memory. It, it becomes easy to recall it. So writing is a good practice. But if you uh, are running short of time and you want a quick revision, you can easily download this PDF and get the printouts. So currently, the scheme covers around 12 crore uh, children. Can you imagine? It's that huge. So we have a population of 130 crores, and this scheme is covering 12 crore children. So its scope is from class one to class eight. So age group is six to 14 years. In it around 11.2 uh, 11, 11 lakh government and government aided schools and schools run by local bodies are included. Local bodies we all know, right? We have studied it under the article 12 state, right? Under the Indian constitution. So we know what local body is, if you don't know. Go back, revise, check it, and let me know your views in the comment section. So for this coming year, 2022 to 23, rupees 10,000 crores has been yearma. So don't go into much of the facts. It is just for your knowledge. It is one of the largest initiatives in the world to enhance the nutritional levels of the school-going children through hot-cooked meals. Isn't it amazing? A government is providing 
cooked meals to kids so that they don't face malnutrition. We all know that kids are the future of tomorrow. When we strengthen our foundation, then we have a strong future tomorrow. So this is a wonderful scheme. So what is the legal backing of the scheme? First is, of course, the National Food Security Act. It makes food a very important component, which should be provided to everyone. And then we have a landmark case, People's Union of Civil Liberties versus Union of India and others in 2001. See, this People's Union of Civil Liberties work for various different rights. It has even filed a PIL for the representation of People's Act. So that is election wala case. This is for food. So in this Supreme Court had, you know, declared that uh, right to food is the human constitutional right. And uh, that is why it becomes a landmark judgment. And it also laid down the basic nutritional value which should be provided for the kids. So do remember this case and also the year. Please specify the year because as I said, People's Union of Civil Liberties work for different interests of the society and it has many different landmark cases. So what is the cost sharing? So this cost sharing is same for all the centrally sponsored schemes. Central sector schemes are different and centrally sponsored schemes are different. And then we have state schemes. So these are three different kinds of schemes. Please remember it. Because then it will help you to understand better how the money is being governed here. Because everything happens with money, right? So we need to know the flow of it. And uh, when you become, you, when you clear the exam, then when you become, go in the government machinery, you should know the working, right? So it's always good to, to know the details. So here for centrally sponsored scheme, uh, the ratio is 60-40 for states and UTs with legislature. Now, what are, uh, which UTs are with legislature? Any guesses? Take a moment to think and recollect. We have Delhi, Puducherry, and Jambu and Kashmir. These are UTs with legislature. So for them, the ratio is 60 and 40. So 60% of the expense will be given by the central government and 40% by the state government. Now the ratio is 90 and 10 for the Northeast states. Now, which are the Northeast states? There are eight states. So it is seven sister states and uh, one more state is, you can guess, you can write me in the comment section. I'm not answering it. And then Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. And 100% UTs, 100% center will bond the uh, expenses of the scheme for the UTs without legislation. So all the remaining UTs, Lakshwadi, Daman and the Unagar, uh, uh, and all those are uh, the expenses borne by the central government. So what is in the menu? So we have your issue of putting egg in the scheme. So let's see what's served in the menu. So it varies from state to state. However, the same nutritional component runs across India. So it is uh, 450 calories and 12 gram protein for primary grades and 700 calories and 20 gram protein for the upper primary children. So if any variation is uh, there, that is at the expense of state government, center is not going to take that expense. Now, some states, 13 states and three UTs to be specific, they have uh, added eggs and uh, for vegetarians, they have uh, replaced it with banana. So that there is no you know, issue uh, amongst the people. And they have managed the harmony and uh, the sentiments of people. So on menu, the additional things which the government can add is milk, egg, fruits, cheese, mushroom, chicky, chicken, et cetera. So all these are added by the state governments or at their own expenses. Depends on what the region requires, what the state uh, is suffering from, which deficiencies. So this is decision is taken by the state government. So with such a malnutrition prevailing in Karnataka, so they decided to uh, add eggs in the diet because uh, we all know egg has a certain nutritional values and that makes it a, it a good choice for school going children. So why it has been issue? So that is dietary choices issues. First is, caste rigidity. So, uh, there are various castes which do not 
opt for eggs. They think egg is a taboo and shouldn't be served. Then there is religious conservation. Then uh, regional differences are there. Some of the states previously tried to add eggs, but then it failed. So there were three states. There were political issues also. So state of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka. So this is Karnataka attempting it for the second time. And today also it is facing so much resistance from the some of the sectors of uh, people in the state. Tamil Nadu has very well tackled the situation and has balanced it out nicely. So Karnataka can take some clues from state of Tamil Nadu and it should stick to its current decision and uh, stick to keeping including eggs in the scheme PM Portion Shakti Nirman. So that's all for the scheme. I hope it helps you in your prelims and means and it gave you some clarity on what the issue is going on, why the issue is going on and what can be the conclusion. If you have any questions, you can write me in the comment section. And if you want me to make a video on any particular topic, you can write that too in the comment section. I would love to hear your views. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for, uh, to get the notifications for upcoming videos. All the best for your preparation. See you soon.